Picture this if you can. You've been on a lovely long month's holiday overseas. You get back and you just open the front door. As you walk in, you get the sense that something is wrong. There's a slight odor, but as you move slowly through the house towards the kitchen, it gets worse and worse. And eventually you find the source. Your freezer broke down over your time while you were away. As you open it up, it's just disgusting. So let's see how we could solve this problem using Home Assistant and an awesome new sensor. So recently, I received an email from Sonoff telling me about their latest device, which is a temperature sensor specifically designed to go into freezers. So let's have a look. So this device has a really nice feeling of quality. It feels solid and the casing feels really nice. It's got the peel protector on the front. We'll pull that off. And as you can see, you've got a nice, large, clear LCD display. On the back side, you need to use a coin just to open up the back side of the cell. And then you can remove the little tab that is stopping the battery from working. So it's got a little coin cell, a CR2477 in the back there. And all we need to do is pull this little plastic tab out. If I can get it out, there we go then it will fire up. So we can just replace this on the back here. There we go. And there we go. So it's started up and as we can see, it's gone directly into the pairing mode. It's showing us what the battery is at and our temperature. So the cable is about a meter and a half in length. And then we have this bullet type temperature probe on the end, which you could neatly place inside your freezer. This could also be used, for example, in a home brewing environment to keep a tab on the temperature, or you could use it to measure the temperature of your spa pool or your swimming pool. It also comes in a second version, which is temperature and humidity, but it does not have an external probe. But otherwise, the build is exactly the same. Now, if the device goes out of pairing mode, you need to take a pin and press it into this little hole, hold it there for two to three seconds, and the pairing will start again. Now that it's in pairing mode, you can just go to settings, devices and services, add integration, add a Zigbee device, and it should pop up here shortly. There we go, starting interview and configuring. Now we can select an area, so we're gonna put this in the kitchen, and I'll call it freezer. So there's our device. We've got the temperature, we've got the battery percentage, there's an identify button. So I've stuck it in the freezer now and as you can see it's going down pretty fast. It seems to update itself every 30 seconds. So now we're going to go along and we're going to create an automation. So from the device I select automations, add an automation, use the device as a trigger and we're going to say when the temperature changes and I want to know when it goes above negative five degrees and we don't have to worry about a duration because I want to know immediately and then we go along and we say add an action so I can select an action device and I'm going to select uh, Simon's iPhone there we go we'll select that and as you can see it defaults to send notification and we'll say freezer alert title um, freezer. So simple as that. We can now save that, give it a name, freezer alert, and we can save that. And there we go. The moment my freezer stops working properly, it sends me a text message wherever I am in the world. Now the back of the device is magnetic, so it sits neatly on the front of my freezer door. So the IP65 waterproof rating for these devices is explained as follows. Using a standard 6.3 millimeter inner diameter test nozzle with a flow rate of 12.5 liters per second, water is sprayed onto a casing from all feasible directions. Actual water jet size, approximately 40 millimeters in diameter and at a distance of up to two meters from the nozzle. Each square meter of the casing surface area may be sprayed for one minute with a minimum test duration of three minutes. So that's a pretty large amount of water. So these little devices are really useful being so well protected. Well, that's all for now. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think of these sensors and if you've got any questions about them. If you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.